Hello and welcome to Datacast Solutions Introduction to NIME for the Data Analyst. In this chapter we're going to talk a little bit about manipulating data. After you've done the data reading and blending, how to alter the data using some of the nodes including the rule engine, the math engine, and some expressions. One of the early nodes that I used for manipulation a great deal um, before the invention of the expression, which I'll be showing you in a few minutes, is actually called the string manipulation mode node. Excuse me. So I'm going to connect up the string manipulation node. And the reason it was so powerful is if you double click on this to see its configuration, you can modify or create a new column and perform dozens of functions against it. Um, just some of the more ones that I've used frequently capitalize, which would basically capitalize all the first letter of every word. Uh, find the index of a column or an index of a character within a column. Um, join strings together. Um, look at, find the length of a string. Remove characters from a string. Replace. So I can do all forms of string manipulation. Subset and so just for fun, for example, if I'm going to take um, this example of the substring, and I can substring. You can see the format of it is double click here to say I want the string that I want to do a substring of and I'm going to do the supplies group. And then the starting position with an offset of zero. So let's say I, doesn't matter which, I said five. You'll notice there's a third option I could include the length, but if I don't specify the length, it will go to the end of the string. And it's going to create a new column called new column. Now when I want to view the output of this, there's my new column and I've got now, granted, this was a, a kind of a pointless example, but what if I said something more like this? I want to get all of the characters after the AND sign. So AND RV. Well, I'm going to do indexes within, I can do functions within functions here. So instead of this, let's build this function outwards. Let's first start by finding the index of the at sign. Okay. So index of, and the string to search is the subgroup, and the string I'm searching for is an at sign. Okay. And I'm just going to start with that just so you can see it. And wherever it found an at sign, it shows where it is in the position. If it didn't find an at sign, it's going to show it as a negative 1, which means it didn't return anything. Well, now let me look at string manipulation. And now I'm going to function within a function. What I want to do, I'll type it on the second line so you can see it. I want to do the substring again. But this time, I want to do the substring from the supplier group, but instead of hard coding the starting position, I'm going to take this function and say starting in the position of the at sign. That's what I want to take off. And now let's look at the output of that. And See, the problem, all the ones that didn't have an at sign are fine, but now you see it's actually at RV. So I want to make one more change here. I want to take the at and go two positions over. So I just get that portion of it. So I'm going to say the index of this plus two. And I'll execute it one last time. Okay. And now we can see I'm actually looking, and I'm going to drag this column over so you can see it much closer next to the original value. So shelters and RV became RV. Garage and car care became. Now I'm going to do one more. I'm going to change RV to be recreational vehicle. So I'm going to do one more function within a function. I'm going to take this function, and now I'm going to add the replace. And 
the string I want to read in as my replacement or examine is this right there. And the string I'm looking for is RV and I want to replace it with recreational vehicle and I could stop right there but there's one more option in here which would tell me it has to match I can add a modifier to it that says has to match a whole word and I could ignore case I'm gonna go ahead and say the whole word has to be RV not just part of it so I'm gonna add the W to this Now I'll execute this, and as I scroll apart, see car care stays the way it was, recreational vehicle got replaced. So, but I have, you'll notice here, when I found the index of negative one, you'll see how everything else got truncated by this. So really, to make this work, what I'm going to need to do is to split this off using the splitters functions and capabilities. And we're going to get to that later is to say, only if the index is greater than negative one do I want to do this confirmation. But that's a chapter coming up. One of the easiest nodes that you can use to alter your data is the math node. And the while it serves a, a very simple purpose, I can perform any mathematics that I want on a node. I've got here a simple file reader, and as I look at the output of it, I've just got a, a few thousand records in here that have various um, sales information about accounts we bid on and won. And um, I may want to perform some math against this. In this case, I'm gonna take a look at the column here called elapsed days in the sales stage. And let's assume that I needed to, to translate that into months. I wanted to get a sense for how many months instead of days. So I'm going to apply a math node to this and create a math formula. And I'll double click on it to connect the node. And I'll right click and I can now type math in any formula I want. I can say take elapsed days and stage and divide it by 30 and say this is a new column called elapsed months in sales stage and uh, I'm not going to convert this to an integer because if I, I'm going to get portions or round portions of numbers because it won't be exactly a, a divisor of 30 so I'm going to click OK and I'm going to execute that node and when I look at it now, I've got an additional math function performed at the end, and now elapsed time and days. By the way, I'm going to grab this column and drag it over here so I can actually see them right next to each other. So my elapsed time in days was 89. So my elapsed time in months divided by 30 was 2.967. So it just gives me a, a mechanism of doing any type of math that you want to be able to do. You can do addition, subtraction, subtraction multiplication, um, exponentiation. And you saw inside the node itself, there are, of course, a number of functions you can perform. Um, you can take uh, the medium, min, maximum values of a column. You can do logs, squares, absolute powers. Any of these functions can be built directly into your math function as well. So um, you have a great deal of things that you can actually do with this node. Now another node that I might like make to make use of in altering data is the rule engine. And the rule engine has a few different options. There's once you learn the syntax of a rule, there's a rule-based row splitter, a rule-based row filter, um, the rule engine itself, if I just type rule, there are a number of different ways you can use it. I want to just use the rule engine. So I'm going to drag this up onto my workflow and connect it. 
And let's take a look at this. I'm going to look at the CSV data. And I've got this column right now called Route to Market. And I'm going to show the possible values. And I can see I might want to change these to something. So I've got telesales, telecoverage, other, reseller, field sales. And I might want to change these. Let's say I wanted to make these numeric values instead. I can provide a rule engine to do that. So I'm going to say if it begins with tele, this is my first translation, it's going to be a 1. So come to the rule engine. And one of the things you notice is that they have four comment lines. They like to remind you how it works. Um, you enter a set of rules and you, at the end of the rule, you provide the output, you know, what, what should it put out after the um, equals and caret symbol. And at the very end is your catch-all, the true equals meaning if no other rule has applied this is the final value that I want you to put. So I'm going to delete all these columns and I'm going to start with the value of route to market and I'm going to say if route to market and they show you the syntax route to market so a field name is like another field name so I'm going to say if route to market is like tel E, then I'm going to put out a value of 1. Okay, and I'm going to call this numeric RTM, route to market. Now, if I execute that and look at it, you can see as I scroll through here, in most of these cases, it's only the ones that had Tela that have a value. Everything else is set to null because I didn't provide a null value. So I'm going to double click on this again, and I'm going to add at the bottom true. And for everybody else, I'm going to put out a value of 5 to say I don't know what it is. And I'll execute that. And as I scroll out, I can now see these are the individual values. But let's, uh, let's go ahead and put some more in here. Okay, If it's reseller and fields sales, let's go ahead and put those two in. So I'm going to say, instead of like, I'm going to say if route to market equals fields sales then I'm going to put out a value of 2 and if route to market is equal to reseller I'm going to put out a value of 3. And if route to market is equal to other, I'm going to put out a value of 4. And now I'll look at my results. And if I drag this over, this column over, so you can see them right next to each other in my route to market, I can see what I'm getting. Okay, field sales, resellers. And as I scroll down, in fact, if I just sort this, all the field sales were two. As I scroll down, and the others were four, the resellers were three. Both of the telas were one, tell both telesales and telecoverage, and there are no fives, which meant there was no bad data in here. Nothing else fell through the cracks. So that's the use of a rule engine to do some computational if-then-else type logic. 
Of course, it's not very sophisticated if-then-else logic, so we want to find a better way of doing that. So instead of using the rules engine, NIME introduced just a few releases back a new mechanism called expressions, column variables and expression variables. And I really love the column expressions node, mostly because it lets me perform multiple operations at the same time. So instead of having one math node and then a rule engine node and then another math node, I can combine them all into one operation. So I'm going to take this text here because it's going to be helpful for me to copy and just do some adjustments to this. I'm going to take the expression node. Now with the expression, you can have as many expressions as you want. You just hit the add button for each expression that you want to create. So I'm going to start by creating one expression and you see it's actually, I'm going to create a new column and I'm going to call it um, to market. If I was replacing an existing column, I could actually click this and then all of my existing columns are there and I could say I want to change route to market from the value that it was to the value that it's going to be. And maybe I want to do that in this case. So I'll go ahead and say I'm going to change it. Now the expression is entered in the form of JavaScript. So you can actually enter JavaScript code here. I'm going to put in my mechanisms right here. I just want to keep those as a reference while I type my code. So in JavaScript, I'm going to say, here's an if condition. And if the column wrote to market is equal to field sales. Then I'm going to put out a value of 2. Else, if, now I can just do some copying and pasting here. If it's equal to reseller, then I'm going to put out a value of 3. Else, if if it's we did field sales route to market, if it's other, Then I'm going to put out a value of 4, else I'm going to put out a value of 5. That was for, excuse me, Tella was for everyone else. So now I can delete that code I pasted in here just to act as a reference for me. So I've written, now if I want to test this out, it'll test it on the first record by hitting the evaluate button. It'll tell me that I've got some syntax errors here. What I can see here is I forgot the closing quotation mark on each of my JavaScripts. And I can evaluate this again. And I'm missing a parenthesis again on this line. Else, if comma, there we go. And so now for the first row, it was a field sales and it's coming out with column two. So I'm going to replace the value in route to market with one, two, three, four. And now I can see the value here. And now route to market is this. But I'm going to simultaneously go back to our lap stays in the sales stage. And I'm going to open up column expressions again. And I'm going to add a new column and I'm going to say elapsed days in months 
and I'm just going to go ahead and do my math formula here. Elapse sales days divided by 30. But my output type, I don't want this to be a string. I'm going to want this to be a double precision number. And it evaluate the first row and show me that that's what it's going to be. So now I've taken what might have been two or three or four or ten nodes, whatever you want, and I can do multiple operations at the same time. So now I've gone ahead and changed the route and simultaneously added the elapsed days. So it's one of the biggest reasons I like this node is I can use a lot more, I, I can accomplish a lot more tasks um, using this one individual node. This concludes this chapter of the class. Feel free to move on to the next chapter.